Hi, my name is Sean Bland, but my friends call me Sean Michael or Run Bum. I've run over 300 ultra marathons. I've been first, last, and everything in between. I started and owned Run Bum Races, where we put on 11 trail and ultra running races a year from Central Florida to Southern Virginia. I hope that with my trail running and race directing experience that I can help you train smarter, run further, and fall in love with trail running. If you find this podcast helpful and or entertaining, please help me out by sharing it. I'd also like to invite you to run or volunteer at one of our mini races. Welcome friends to the Bend Don't Break podcast. Oh, so we were just talking about off the air, Scott and I were just talking about how I'm at my parents' house right now. And we were talking about how they have a nanny cam for our, our dog, uh, Jade, Tiny Jade, Jade the party wiener, as we call her, run bum mascot. And, uh, you know, so my parents can kind of watch her and talk to her when she's, when they're not here. And it's kind of funny because sometimes I'll, I'll come over and I'll be like watching television or something. And all of a sudden, like you, my dad's on it and it's like starts talking to me or something. And it's kind of funny because it's like, it's totally muffled and it sounds like I'm at the bad receiving end of like somebody placing an order through like a old Taco Bell drive through. It's like, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. and it's like total time delay. And it'll like freak me out. Cause all of a sudden out of nowhere, it'll be like, Hey, what are you doing? I'm like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> but that's crazy. Your dog actually responds to it. Yep. So like every now and then I'll get on there and be like tiny Jade and she'll be like, like kind of get excited and then like be sad again. Yeah. It's kind of sad. What, what your parents didn't tell you though, is they actually got the camera just to like monitor you whenever you're in the house by yourself. 100%. I'm like, damn it. Cause you can see the refrigerator <laughs> and I'm like, I'm always eating food out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised they didn't put a lock on that. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I'm like, ah, oh, I know he likes the bacon. It's like, <laughs> yeah well uh yeah man what's uh what's going on how was your weekend uh my weekend was really awesome i went up and played soccer twice in Asheville in like an eight like actually in an 18 hour time period or even less than that. i think it was like 12 hours i played two pickup games of soccer and went for this group run at the wedge uh brewery in Asheville. i in the river arts district i love this group run why? Because I'm almost guaranteed to be the slowest person there every time, even if I'm in <laughs> my top peak physical shape. It is awesome. It is all the top collegiate uh, and road running guys in Asheville. And there's nothing like this anywhere else I've been. Um, yes, there are a lot of very, very fast women that come as, as well. Um, it's awesome. So if you're not going out for like a nine minute mile run and you want to come run five, six, seven minute miles, <laughs> Uh, or just do your own thing. Everyone's always welcome. Um, then I highly recommend every Thursday. I think right now we're starting at 615. Um, years ago, I used to run with them a lot. Like I, I think the best shape I was ever in was when I was running with these guys every Thursday or pretty much like two or three Thursdays out of the month. And it's a progression run. And uh, I knew that I was running, um, but didn't want to race uh, seven sisters, 25 K in Montreat, which is just, you know, 20, 30 minutes down the road, um, you know, from Asheville. And, uh, I was like, I would rather go run really, really fast flat and get that, um, that hurt and that, that training in and go easier at the race on Saturday, than race Saturday. And then it messed me up for my, uh, spring a race which is heiner trail challenge 25k in central pa which happened this weekend we can talk about that in a second so i go out to this wedge run and i'm like oh, i'm in halfway decent shape definitely not anywhere close to my best shape um and it's a progression run you start off and it's 99 percent flat there might be 100 feet of climbing and it's an out and back so it's like seven and a half miles a little over total round trip and you start off and uh first of all i'm the only guy wearing a shirt uh, everyone else is shirtless, uh, you know, for Asheville, it was, it was, it was which, warm, you know, which that's not your MO either. No, no, I had, Sean. <laughs> well, I, I had my steel chainsaw shirt on. I feel like I even wore that for the race. I felt like it just gave me the sense of like rugged manness that I might need to like tap into. Um, I also kind of like 
channeling the inner redneck, you know? So we go out <laughs> the first mile, 658. I'm like, oh, okay, this doesn't feel like it felt fine. Um, you know, conversational talking to people. Uh, mile two, I, lo- I, I looked at my splits as I've talked about before. I, I don't really wear a GPS or I did not until I started wearing one about two, uh, two and a half months ago, just really kind of try to better my training, keep me under control with heart rate and just kind of just see what's going on, you know? And so I'm, uh, you know, I'm just kind of running. And then the second mile is like 612, 613. It's like, okay, wow. You know, we're picking it up and you kind of don't really notice because the guys up front just kind of do that. And I'm just trying to keep up. My whole goal is just, I don't care if I'm all out racing. I want to stay with the group until they hit the turnaround, uh, like three and a half or so miles. I'm sorry, three, three and a three quarter miles. And so six, six, 12, six, 13, and we're on this paved, everything's paved, right? So we're on this paved path and I'll never forget. I, I was running probably about a five fifty mile at this point, which I have not been running a lot of five minute miles, especially since <laughs> I've gotten injured and tore a ligament in my foot. So I, I'm, I'm, ex, I'm just ecstatic to be hanging with these guys and they're all talking and I'm like, uh, uh, out of breath. Well then I can't even Im- I can't even imagine that pace at a conversational pace. That's it's insane. crazy. I've been there <laughs> once in my life. I've been there once in my life. Thanks to, <laughs> thanks to that group. Seriously. That it's a, they're an awesome group of guys uh, and gals, man. It's just awesome. But so I'm like going all out at this point, <laughs> this guy goes, <laughs> excuse me. He passes me in the grass. Okay. This janky grass running sub five so probably running a 540 mile pushing a stroller with his daughter in it okay i don't know the guy is amazing whatever you're like superhuman and he's like hey on your left buddy and it's like full conversation and the girl's like zoom zoom daddy zoom zoom <laughs> it's like you could tell that my whole just demeanor and ego just was like deflated How- now how, how to humble Sean Blanton. Wow. <laughs> I'm already humbled, like running with those guys. I'm just happy to, and, 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 and I say all this and I love this group and I hope that me telling a story and I'll talk a little bit more about it in a second is I go there because I know I'm not the fastest. I know that I'm probably the slowest person there, but you can only get better if you train with people better than you period. And oh, that's what yeah. that group is for me. And so I didn't fully hang with them to the turnaround. I was probably like, 20 seconds back. Um, but they stop and they take a break, but I didn't want to break. I just wanted to keep running. So what I did is took the next mile easy and ran like a seven, like, you know, it was like a six fifty something mile on that one. Um, but you know, and then of course, you know, in a half mile past the turnaround, they all catch up and they split into two groups. And at, by the end, it's like some of those guys are running low five minute miles and yeah. put this all in perspective. It's like, I finished, it was like, I think it was like 7.6 miles, allegedly, according to my watch. And my, I think my average pace was like 634. Again, this is completely flat, right? Um, maybe a couple like small hundred feet up total, right? So it's basically flat. I averaged 634s and I would guesstimate that, you know, from the first person finishing, even though they stopped during the middle of the run and like took a two minute or so plus or minus break um, to let everybody catch up. I was probably five minutes behind that person (laughs) and we were together basically at the turnaround. So like when someone is running that much faster than you, uh, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's very impressive. And, and, and what do you want to do is like, you want to train your butt off to get to that point. Um, yeah. Yeah. So just watching this, there's, there's some fast people in Asheville. Like I'll run with the, uh, the mountain running club over in black mountain and they're like Wednesday night run. It's just, we go for a trail run through uh, the lower portion of Montreat and, uh, and it's just conversational the whole time. And like, you can tell, like, it's, it's the fun night we go out for, you know, three, four miles and go have a beer, but like, it's like, they're not even sweating. And it's just like, Oh yeah, I'm going to go do uh go to do like track, like, you know, 200 sprint repeats or something like the next day. And like, you know, it's just that <laughs> there's some fast people there, but it, I think it's funny that that is your, that's your shakeout run for a 25 K mountain run that weekend. Yeah. I mean, and I love that black mountain run, <laughs> you know, Sean Pope, Lauren, um, dude, those guys are awesome. Speaking of, during, uh, for my 25 K run, uh, which was the seven sisters, 25 K. First of all, if you get a chance, definitely go run that. I, if you know anything about me and even if you don't, my favorite race courses are 20, like 30 K really 25 K or less. 
as much up, as much down, and as much technical as possible. And that checks all of those boxes. Um, and it needs to be scenic above all else. Um, I took probably 30, 40, 50 photos during the race. It was incredible. I got to run with Sean Pope for a while. Um, oh, he raced. Yeah, he did. And I said, Sean, like, you probably don't even need this route flag. He goes, man, I run this thing all the time. You know, that's like <laughs> gotta be his milk run, you know? Um, <laughs> I used to make fun of him on, uh, on Strava cause he would, he runs that loop all the time. I, that's one of my favorite loops in the, in the state, but, uh, you know, he'd post it on Strava and I'd be like, man, that's a solid loop buddy. Uh, but it's, <laughs> it really is like, even if you're not doing the actual race, like going up into Montreat and, you know, however you get up on that East Ridge, you cross over, you hit Graybeard, you come back down. And I was telling you, uh, you know, about when you come off that West Ridge, that last descent, it's less than a mile and over a thousand feet a drop. Or if you're going the other way, it's a thousand feet up. Mm -hmm. um, but like, it's some gnarly vert there, just so close to the city. It's like, it's, it's one of my favorite training routes. Like I'll go out there, I'll hike it, I'll run it. Like it's, it's so great. And to be able to actually race it with, uh, you know, some of the state's best runners. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great experience. Dude, I, I cannot agree more with that. And the whole reason I ran it is like, I've wanted to run it for a while just cause I've heard great things, but you run it all the time. And we always talk about this and you're like, dude, you got to check that out race or not. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been hard because it is always either the weekend of Heiner or the weekend before, which till the day that I die, if I am physically able to run, I will be at Heiner 25K every single year. As my, I don't care what distance it is. That is my favorite race in the country. There's nothing like it. Um, you know, as far as Southeast 25K or 30 sub ultra goes, that uh, Seven Sisters, I would say, probably takes the cake. I love Brandon Thrower, who's the race director, who has Tanawa uh, Adventures as his races. Brandon and I go way back, man. Um, before he was a race director, before I was a race director, I think we both started right around the same time. Um, but we oh, used cool. to, yeah, we used to run together um, for this stuff called WNC Trail Runners. And they had a wiki yeah. space and a gentleman who I saw at the race who lives in Black Mountain, Adam Hill, um, who is a legend, funny, funny guy, like has always has me cracking up. Um, super nice guy. He's just a great, genuine person. And, um, he doesn't run races anymore. So he runs just like his own, you know, self-supported runs, like, you know, do group runs, but this, um, WNC trail runners, it was like maybe seven to 10, what I would call fat ass races a year. So it's like group runs, you just show up and, um, but there was a set route set day. Like we're doing this, we're dropping aid here, whatever. And I ran four or five of those. In fact, every year, Brandon um, like, and basically all the guys putting on the runs, it was like, you know, five or six people. And it's like, if they weren't organizing it, then they would run it. And even if they were organizing it, they still might run it. And so every yeah. Memorial day, I would, uh, weekend, I would always run, uh, come up there to Swannanoa or basically black mountain. Sorry. If you live in black mountain, you're like, we don't claim Swannanoa. Okay. Well, <laughs> my bad. If you're not from that area, it's basically black mountain, which is essentially a <laughs> suburb of Asheville, kind of. Okay. Um, again, I apologize for that, but we would go run, uh, and I would always race, uh, uh, Sean Pope on this rock to rock, uh, 10 K and it was about five and a half miles. And Sean and I would always be racing back and forth. And, um, it was kind of funny cause you know, he would anything over like that distance. Oh, he would crush me on, like he would crush yeah. me on. Like I was not a fast ultra and he's just like the man. But it was like on that short distance, it was just short enough where I had that just extra little base <laughs> speed that I could just barely get him on it. And, and we would race back. It was fun. So I would do that Friday night. That would be when Rock to Rock was. And then I think it was Saturday or Sunday. I would then go run Brandon's May Mountain Marathon or hmm. And <laughs> things yeah. that make you go hmm. <laughs> mm. It was like, mm, that was, was that, mm, was that good? Was that bad? Mm, that was interesting. <laughs> so, and that started down in uh, Mills river and ran all the way up to the summit of Mount Pisgah and then back down. It was like this really cool uh, lollipop and it was awesome. And I love those events, man. I miss them. It, it was just super low key. Uh, it's like that just raw ultra running vibe. It's like, yeah, man, it's not really 
you know, it's not flagged. It's like, you're going to go up this and you'd kind of like follow other people. You'd be like, Hey, you're going to turn here. It was so much, I just had a blast doing that. And so that's kind of how Brandon started race directing. And, you know, now he's branched off with a bunch of races and I've had the pleasure of doing, um, I won his Fonta Flora half marathon, uh, COVID year. Um, can't really say much. There weren't a lot of people that, that ended up showing up. So it's like, yeah. good job, buddy. Um, but it was, it was still, it was really cool. If you want to fast half and 50 K, there you go. Uh, and then I, I ran grand further 25 K when I was injured, uh, last year, I think it was a year before. That's a really cool race too. Mm -hmm. I will have to say though, this is my favorite race that I've run at his seven sisters. Yeah. I've done a couple of Brandon's and, uh, you know, he's got the, the South mountain, which is a great, great park. I love that, uh, that area. Um, but, um, I haven't actually ran seven sisters, but like I said, like that's that, that loop is something I'll do, you know, at least once a month or try to do once a month, um, just training run or just going out there. But, um, I mean, it's just knowing the course it's, it's one of my favorite trails in the state. Um, and, uh, yeah, Brandon just puts on amazing races. Was he playing the banjo to start off the race as he always does? Yeah. And I even filmed that, like, <laughs> I even filmed that, like while I was running, I was like, <laughs> like put it up on Instagram. I was like, it was like, ding, 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 you know, and it's like, ready, go. <laughs> you got, got to get him to play some like Metallica on banjo next time. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. But what a, what a sick route. I mean, uh, like, so I blew up my legs on, uh, I know we're talking about my weekend, uh, and I don't want it to sound all about me, but I want to use my experience to describe the course to you and, and how cool it was. Up. Um, but before I even do that is huge shout out to Drew, uh, Antonese. I think I'm saying it right. Yeah. Um, yep. I talked to him before Dude, he, the race. He crushed that race. Killed it. He was like two Oh seven or something like that. Um, but also a huge shout out to um and drew's been killing it man like so he's living with i think his name's david hedges hodges mm -hmm. i'm sorry i'm bad who who won uh quest for the crest 50k last year who i'd never heard of I, i'm the yeah. worst man i'm like the worst fan like i don't i don't pay attention to anybody um until all of a sudden you don't, they come you, don't, and run you don't strava stock on your uh, friday night oh dude i i actually <laughs> it's funny about strava is like i actually just literally two days ago, just deleted straw. Well, I don't, I haven't had it on my phone for a while, but my chorus has been auto auto loading or whatever oh, uh, no. to Strava. And yeah. So like I, I, I turn my watch on when I go play soccer. Cause I kind of want to see, you know, ish, how long I've been out there, how many miles, but more like heart rate. And I know it's not accurate. Um, the other day I turned it on when I was paragliding <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> this is why I'm getting off. I turn my, uh, my account to private now. Cause I'm just like, Oh my God. Um, but I recorded it paragliding and I had like an hour and a half flight and it's like kind of cool. I wanted to see what my heart rate was up basically like, all right, when I was feeling that really tight butt cheek sensation of like, Oh my God, it's like how high, high was my heart rate? And it was like, apparently got up to like 125, which my resting heart rate is like in the low forties. So that's, that's, that's pretty that's not bad though. Yeah, no, 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 no. And, uh, you could see the little spikes in it, but it auto loaded to Strava and I had all these people that were like, you went for a walk, 25 mile walk in an hour and a half and got 10,000 feet of climbing. What's up with all those little circles you're doing? It's like, <laughs> you know, why are you trying to cheat? And it's like, Oh my God, people take this way too seriously. And it's like, I just had to go just, I was like, all right, I, we're done here. <laughs> Dude. I know. I know we're taking a left turn. I want to get back to Drew's, uh, Drew's uh, yes. finish at seven sisters, but yeah, you know, I was never like super obsessed with the Strava thing, but like I would go in, I'd do a run, I'd go in, I'd, you know, I'd change the name of it, whatever I do. Cause you know, I like analytics. I like the numbers. Um, but then I also like, you know, Strava, it'll track your shoes. So if you're doing a trail run, be like, okay, I'm using my lone peaks. So I would, you know, go in, edit and change the shoes uh -huh. to my lone peaks. Um, so, you know, like, okay, I've got like 500 miles in these shoes, time to replace them. Or you just look at them and be like, these things are garbage, throw them away. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it kind of happened in uh, my detraining phase of late last year into this year where I was just kind of like, you know, I don't really care anymore. Like, you know, I'm on social media enough as it is. Like, I don't need a running social media. It's great to see what other runners are doing. I love the platform. Don't get me wrong. And it's great for inspiration. People, you know, you, they can see what people are doing. They can challenge themselves, you know, like, oh, Sean just ran this course at, you know, 
X amount of time. Let me see if I can beat him. It's great. But I just didn't need that. And so now like, I think mine still loads up to it, but like, I don't even check it anymore. My Garmin, I'm wearing a uh, Phoenix five and it's, it's so far off now. Like I'll go on group runs and the guys will put in a 12 mile day and my watch says like nine and a half miles. And I'm just like, dude, so like, I don't even know what to trust on my watch anymore. I don't care about how many miles I ran. You know, I used, I used to do that where it was like, oh, I've got to get 2,500 miles for the year and like come, you know, but like, that's, you know, again, we're sidebarring here, but like, that's my training has completely changed to where it's all of a perception now where it's like, or perceived effort where it's like, I know what I need to do for the week. If I don't hit my miles, I don't need to hit 60 miles or 70 miles. It's like, if I put in a solid run and I need a day off, I don't, I don't care. Like, I don't, I don't need that, that affirmation that Strava gives you. But, um, but again, it's super fun. And if you were looking for like time to kill, like it's, it's fun to scroll there and see what the, you know, especially if you follow some elite runners, like you can see what they're doing. You're like, you really humble yourself, but, uh, but no, man, back to, back. I, yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say like, uh, like I'd like to get back to, uh, back to, to, to Drew's finish. Did you, were you running with him at all? Or did he take off from the gate? <laughs> no, no, this, so one of the reasons I went and like very willingly destroyed my legs and my body at the wedge run and playing soccer is because I did not want to feel like, Oh, my legs feel good when I start this. Cause I did not want to be like, Hey, I should try to like run and keep up with <laughs> these people and then hurt myself for next weekend's race. So, uh, no, yeah. I, I made a very, very, um, very solid deal with myself that was like, okay, man, I will let you run uphill. Like you can run all the uphill. In fact, you should for training. Um, but anytime you hit a flat, you're going to slow down. Anytime you mm-hmm. hit a downhill, you're not like, I basically was like, I'm going to jog the flats, jog the downs. Like if you know me at all, it's like, I love bombing downhill. I did not do yeah. that one time at all on Saturday. Um, so that was kind of nice. So yeah, I just kind of did my own thing. And uh, yeah, like I, whoever was up front and it, I don't think it was Drew. I think it was somebody in front of him. Um, but it's kind of insane. Cause like you start on the road and it's like, you've got basically like, I don't know, maybe a 10th or so of a mile, like not super far where it's like flat. Okay. And then it just goes boom. And it p- pitches you straight up this hill. I told you that road going up to uh to rainbow road is insane. Like I ran the whole thing. I did. I ran the whole yeah. thing. Heck yeah. Good for um, you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cause I just like, this is, that's in my wheelhouse. Um, but yeah. I was like, I remember when I first started going uphill, it's like, Oh, Oh, that wedge run. Oof. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ow. Dude, but, yeah. Dude, there's some roads in that neighborhood. So on the, uh, on the West side of, uh, uh, kind of where you come down, where you finish the course, I forget. Oh, yeah. They're all like, uh, a lot of them are like States. I think it's like Oklahoma or something, but dude, there are some steep roads in there where you don't even have to get on trails and you can just run that neighborhood and get some serious vert. Like, yeah, that whole, like, it's like this bowl of like a valley and it just goes it starts going up 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 boom and then it's like it straight vertically. Yeah, yeah no and and coming back down at the end like you're going down that yeah but it was funny because i think from a um if i was somebody else or i was pacing or i was trying to run this i would have walked that entire uphill right there or most of it um, but i watched all these people that i'm like man you know you can hear people breathing like audibly yeah. like uh, 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 and it's you're going way too hard at the start of that and i i watched a lot of people yeah it's just like you're putting yourself in this uh and again no judgment whatever because it's so early in the race like you're like oh i gotta run and, and and in your mind and if you take nothing else from this today's podcast take this is that uh, a lot of roads start finish or sometimes in the middle will hit a uh, pavement section um especially if we're up in the mountains wherever that might be anywhere in the world. Um, and you're like, Oh, it's paved. I should run that. And it's like, that's not true. You need to decide for that day, that distance, how your body feels, um, what grade. And it's not like I look at that and I'm like, okay, let me get my clinometer out, which is a tool (laughs) used to measure gradient of the hill, by the way. I'm writing that Um, one down. Okay. (laughs) Clinometer. There you go. Um, (laughs) If you look at that, uh, but it's kind of how, how it feels, right? It's like, okay, yeah. this is kind of too steep to run. Or I always ask myself is, am I going to, um, 
Am I gaining time by putting putting forth a lot more effort and jacking my heart rate up from running this? Or if I walk this and keep my heart rate lower, will it be better? And typically, if I'm asking myself that, the answer is always walk. Um, yeah, you already know. You already know. You know, it's like it's yeah. like, come on, dude, ego check. Leave it at the door. Let's walk this. So, yeah. And then it. Uh, but anyway, so if you you know, may, even if it's road, definitely walk that if you need to. Um, but yeah, then it hits that, uh, that rainbow trail and then it flattens out a lot. Yeah. I was going to say, especially on that race, like you, you do that, that steep incline and if you can run it, go for it, but you don't need to, cause you're going to really, you're going to make your, you're going to catch up or like advance in the race on that, that, uh, it's like a mile or two, uh, that, that loop around rainbow road. Um, and for the most part, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty flat. It's, it's wide enough to where if you need to pass people, you're going through those beautiful rhododendron tunnels. Like, um, but, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a great section of trail before you hit the, uh, the, the trussel trail and, uh, it gets a little bit more technical, but, um, did you feel that most of the, the, the technical spots were, were still runnable? Oh, a hundred percent. Like everybody kept talking about how technical that race is. And it's like, yes, there were sections that had rocks and stuff like that. To me, it was not like, I don't know, somebody who's used to running on like the Black Mountain Crest Trail, you know, which we do for Quest for the Crest, like that to me is boulder hopping. Now, obviously, compared to a normal trail, yes, it's more technical and there's a lot more like um, um, drops, like where it'd be like five, six feet where you'd kind of have to like scurry down it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if I was bombing down that, it's like I'm, I kept asking myself, it's like, would I jump this? You know, like, yeah, <laughs> would I just go for it and do like a two foot, like, roll or something like that but no i it's kind of nice because i feel i felt like um you know once you hit that initial climb on the road which is very short-lived then you have like a, i felt like a lot of the race was a lot of that again what we call douche grade it's like that gradual you know three to seven percent um climb and again help me help you i was running with a lot of ultra runners that i could tell um and I, and one of the reasons a long time ago that I kind of backed away more from ultras, uh, I got burnt out, but was, I would find myself on like three or four mile road runs that I'd be walking like the easiest of Hills. And like I said, this race for me was a training run was to not race this. The only thing I wanted to do was run steady uphill to build muscular strength. That was it. Yeah. Um, so I was running stuff that if I was racing, I would have been walking, but there was a lot of stuff that I was like, Oh, I'd run this either way that I saw a lot of people that I'm assuming they're ultra runners, or maybe it's just somebody's not, that hasn't trained for that is, as they were um, walking that now. So what I'm getting at is in your training, um, I, if you're training for something like seven sisters um, or a mountain race, I think it is very, very good um, that you find something that is that, six to 10% gradient that you run like, not just like, Oh, I'm going up and back for a couple minutes, but you find something sustained and you build your muscular endurance. Um, and you build the muscular strength rather and your endurance, um, to be able to keep a constant pace going up something like that. And yeah. the better trained and the better in shape you get for that, the longer you'll be able to have your stride. Like that's, that's the elite level then it's like not doing short steps, but then being able to keep a full stride for that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you hit, you hit two things right there. Like that, like saying like the short steps, when you're going uphill, it's always better to shorten your stride and take more steps at a less distance. And that's going to be less effort for you. But, but when you get better and you get more used to it, you can make that, that stride, as long as you're not overextending, you can make that a little bit, you know, a little bit a little bit farther of a stride and, and really make some, uh, some solid gains on that. Um, I know some people are going to hate me by saying this, but you mentioned like doing hill repeats or whatever, but, um, I've, I have a newfound love for treadmills in the past, like two years, um, just with the amount of training I've been doing and, or the, the, the types of training I've been doing and the traveling I've been doing. Um, it's, you know, if I'm down in Florida, like I used to run bridges and stuff and get like, you know, 60 feet of vert off of a, a, a bridge. And I'm just like, that's just not even worth my time. You know? Um, yeah, it's a hill repeat, but that's, you know, it's like taking a cold shower in Florida. It's not really cold when the water is like 70 degrees. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, 
you know, like I love uh, doing treadmills and just like being like, all right, here goes an hour and just put it at something that's achievable. Don't go for like, like you said, like five to 10%. Don't do your first run at 10% and mm-hmm. only be able to do it for 10 minutes. Put it at 5% on your first run on the treadmill and just do 5% for an hour. And I guarantee you that's going to gas your legs and it's going to be way harder than you think it is. Even go down to 3%, like start at 3% move and then do, you know, do a, a, an interval of like 10 minutes at like at 7% and then back it down to 3%, but you're always going up and you'll notice it. Um, when I'm, when I'm training for the mountain races out West, like, uh, like last year I was training for, I think it was Crested Butte 50 mile and there were two prominent climbs. And so I looked at it and I was like, okay, climb number one is, I think like seven miles because out there you have sustained climbs. It's not like on the East coast right. where you're just up and down, you have sustained climbs. And so it's like, I right, like seven miles, uh, X amount of vert. It's like averaged to like 7%, you know, yes, you're doing some 10, 12%, some's three, but like, I'm like, all right, I need to do seven miles at an average of 7%. So I just doot, 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 type that in on the treadmill, put on a podcast, put on some music, whatever, and just go. Um, yeah. and I'd be doing this at the climbing gym and I'm like the only, only climber that uses the treadmills there. And I'd be on the treadmill for like three hours, just like sweating it out. Like, uh, yoga class is like entering and exiting. And I'm just like, Hey there, like, but like, uh, you know, just like going balls to the wall or not even balls to the wall, but just like that, like just a little bit above that easy effort. Um, and the more I did it, the, the better it got. Um, and it, that race, it really worked out well, um, except for the severe lightning storm I got stuck in at 13,000 feet, but, uh, um, <laughs> or 12,000 feet. God, that was one of the scariest moments. I've uh, been in the mountains a lot and that was one of the scariest moments, but, uh, um, but, uh, but yeah, it's like, it's just doing that, that what you call douche grade and just going at it and just like keeping up the pace. Um, I think, I think there is a time and a place for, for hill repeats and sprints, you know, that's more to like you know, boost your VO2 max and kind of help that kind of stuff. So hill repeats are great, but if you're only doing those like little, like 30 second, one minute intervals, that's not really addressing that sustained endurance aspect that you're really looking for in these mountain races. Dude, I, I cannot agree more. I absolutely love the treadmill and for very specifically for certain things, uh, recovery runs I do on the treadmill a lot cause it's easy. I can just set it at what pace I want it at. Um, but mo- most importantly is what you're talking about. And I put it at like 7%. I find that's kind of like my sweet spot yeah. right there. Um, very Two very important things to note uh, and do when doing what Scott's talking about. I don't even know what you'd call it. Just like sustained douche grade, you know, climbing on a treadmill. Um, whatever grade you put it on. It is very important that you do not put it up so high that you're on your toes. Okay. Yeah. You still want to be hitting midfoot and taking somewhat full stride. Um, You know, what is hill work and what is this? It's speed work in disguise is what it is. And, you know, an hour is a really long time. Um, I do 20 minutes, 30 minutes sometimes, like I've done 45 before. but, you know, again, it's very, number one is make sure you're still hitting midfoot and keeping a normal stride. Um, number two is that whenever you get done doing that workout, you put it back at zero, then you flatten out and run at least a mile, uh, at least a half mile, but you do it at a faster ever, effort. So like, let's say you're going at a 10 minute mile at a 7% incline, which doesn't sound like very fast, but for no, 7%. It's really good. So I'm just using 10 minute miles as a, you know, just cause. So math. If you, yeah, math because of quantum <laughs> physics. That's why. Yeah. Um, so um, because the face of Facebook algorithms are more likely to populate this podcast. That's the I reason. That's the reason. Why. That's yeah. why we all know. <laughs> um, so once you get done with that, put it back at zero incline and you're going to want to increase that like from 10 minute mile to, I don't know, like an 845 or something like that. You don't need to be an all out sprint, but you need to have a noticeable change in pace. Anytime you're doing hill work, anytime you're doing um, Stairmaster, anytime you're doing this, you know, douche grade hill climbing, always, always, always want to finish doing 
half mile to two miles, depending on how long you've been on it. If you've only been on it for 20 minutes, maybe a half mile, a mile is fine. Been on it for an hour, maybe you consider doing two miles. But um, And it just gets your body used to switching gears um, from going up to flat, quick turnover. And you'll find that now you're getting used to when you crest the top of a hill and either go to flat or downhill, your legs will begin to recover quicker and they're more apt and more used to getting that turnover faster and your heart rate will drop quicker. Yeah. I mean, it's like, like two things, like a, that's what I love about, uh, mountain races or even just hilly things. It's like, I call it the roller coaster where like you may be power hiking or you're like running at that, that slower pace, but then what makes or breaks a, a, a mountain run, uh, is when you're power hiking or you're at that slower pace and you get to the crest of that hill, the minute you get to the crest of that hill, you start running, not, not balls out running, but you start running. And if it's a flat and then especially when it starts getting downhill, cause if like, if you're going and you're like, oh, and you're like, you're power hiking and you're power hiking and you get to the top and you look and you're like, oh, well, isn't it beautiful up here? And then like, next thing you know, you wasted another 30 seconds up there when you could have been running and those 30 seconds, they add up. Um, but another thing, I think the, uh, that doing that adjusted pace of the, let's say the 10 minute mile at 7%, when you're done you're doing a different stride. Like it's a shorter step. Um, you're probably doing the ultra shuffle a little bit more. Hopefully you're still hitting the mid, mid, uh, the middle, middle of your foot. But, uh, um, you know, when you put the treadmill back down to zero and you pick up the pace, it's kind of like doing strides at the end of a, a workout. Is it also, it keeps your stride and your, your form in check because the faster you run, the more, the more likely you're going to do that natural, turning that uh, of, of your legs that like it's gonna you know it's it's gonna put your body back into like the your knees are gonna be moving in the right direction you're gonna be getting a higher a higher knee your your feet are gonna be kicking back farther um, that's right and so and so yeah it, it's 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 gonna like help you like from doing a, a kind of like adjusted stride um and i think it's i think it's definitely worth it um but uh i, I want i want to touch on something real quick with the treadmill since we're talking about it but uh um, I, I did a workout last week and it was three hours on the treadmill. Um, okay. yeah, <laughs> it was, it was rainy and super cold here in Durham. And I was planning on doing it on, we had like a, a rails to trail. Like I was planning on doing a, uh, basically like a tempo workout on the trail, but like, I, I like, I love the ultra mindset of like, all right, let's get out there. Rain, snow, mud, let's whatever, like. David Goggins get it done. But uh, there's also a time for when it's like cold and miserable. I knew that I would be more productive on the treadmill than like freezing my ass off in, in cold rain for three hours on the trail. Like I was just like, I'm just going to go on a treadmill and like, it's going to be way more comfortable. And I'm going to be way more efficient. And I had one of the best workouts that I've had in a long freaking time where uh, I basically went, did what you were kind of talking about where I did an hour at the 10 minute mile um, so six miles an hour at adjusted pay or adjusted grade. So I would do like 3% and then I would go up to six and for like 10 minutes or 20 minutes and then come back down and do it for an hour. So basically just like slowly gassing my legs and then flatten the treadmill out. And then I started working on, uh, different, uh, levels of tempo. So, um, I think I started at like an eight thirteen mile for like 20 minutes and then bump that down to 747 down to 713. And I would just kind of go up and down for another two hours. And, um, for anybody that knows me, wow. I'm really into nutrition and, and, you know, uh, blood sugar and body stuff like that. So I was wearing a, con a continuous blood glucose monitor. Um, and so I was watching that, which was really fascinating to see at 813 at 747 pace, my glucose wasn't like it wasn't really adjusting. It was staying at like, like it was staying at baseline. The only time that it really dropped in a spike was when I hit, when I started doing 713. So just by seeing that my breathing was the same, I was still able to like nose breathe. I wasn't feeling much more gassed at 713, but I saw that I went from like, I was at like a hundred and I went down to like 89, um, uh, on my glucose when I started running at 713. So I'm like, okay, that is kind of where my lactic threshold is, where I'm kind of switching from burning fat to utilizing more carbs. And so I knew I'm like, okay, 
if I'm running at that, I need to start taking in more calories. And I was eating a uh, uh, hashtag pocket dates. Um, I'm, I, I'm at the rock climbing gym. I got my, my towel laid out and I've got, mm. <laughs> I've got like six dates just like lined up on the treadmill and uh, this amazing mustache. And uh, I, I'm sure people were judging me. Wait, you but, said uh, you six, know. six dates with that mustache. Yeah. Sounds oh, yeah. about right. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yes, yeah, so I'd eat two dates on the hour, which is another thing fantastic uh nutrition it's 30 uh uh was it? it's 30 grams of carbs 150 calories like not a lot of fiber dates, in it so, one date no two dates though but still oh, two, two dates, dates. Yeah. i mean um yeah, it's nothing. but uh but yeah so i did that for three hours and then i i you know towards the end i've actually finished with a couple of like uh i think like a mile at like 650 just like seeing where i was at and like i i felt Solid. absolutely great and just like varying it enough because like there's not a big difference between 813 and 747 um but then going from 747 to 30 to 713 like you know you're picking up the pace a lot more but like when you're running 713 two hours into a run and then you bump that all the way back up to 813 that's a huge i felt like i was walking at that point you know like um and so i don't know like it's i don't i don't know how often i'll be able to actually do a three-hour treadmill run but it was like, it, it was like structured. I went in with a plan and like, um, the other thing is, is I've been running with a metronome. It, it's actually a drum machine, but, but so I had it at 90 beats per minute, which is 180 strides like per minute. Um, is that fast? So like, I don't know. Uh, is that fast? No, I, I, like what they say, um, in, are we, like, are we uh, talking like the beginning of Freebird or the end of Freebird? <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Uh, Freebird's like way faster than that, but no, like okay. I, I think like 180 is like the ideal stride for most people, 180 beats per minute. Um, but, uh, so I've noticed that like when I do run, I I'm, I'm six foot five. Um, so I'm very tall. So my stride is always a lot slower, like 165, 172 per minute. Um, and so with me running with a metrodome at, uh, at 180, um, it really like, I'd noticed the efficiency and like, it, it, and just like my knees were lifting higher. My feet were kicking back quicker. And like, uh, it, it was really beneficial, uh, such a great workout. And like, I've been running with the metrodome. I did my last race this weekend, uh, uh, almost five hours of just listening to a drum machine clicking at 90 beats per minute for like nothing else, but like, it just, it puts you in this flow. It was amazing. So let's, uh, let's segue into that. So we talked a little bit about, you know, how I did the seven sisters 25 K, which is awesome. Took a bunch of photos, had a blast, it was all these overlooks. I couldn't be, believe people were running by them. I'm like, look at this. I was like, let me take your photo. You look awesome. Had a great time, hung out all the way to the end, helped break down a little bit. It was just, it was awesome, right? Um, 10 out of 10, recommend that to anybody uh, next year. And Brandon's awesome. Go run his races. They're great too. Everyone I've run has been awesome. Um, check that out. Um, so most of his stuff is kind of around the Charlotte's, Morganton, Asheville general area, um, which is where he lives, Morganton. Um, but yeah, check that out. But yeah, let's segue that into you ran a race, my friend. You ran the New River Trail 50K, which is on the New River Trail along the New River in Virginia, say, which is not. Yeah. Say New River one more time. <laughs> uh, New River. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, oddly enough, it's. Uh, um, well, whatever it's a rails to trails, uh, it, trail. let's just say and, it's the, it's the complete opposite of, uh, what you were running this weekend. Right, right, right. And I would have loved to run that cause I'm sure it was like super fast. And I've actually, we had looked at a long time when I was doing, looking for places for my shadows of the South hundred miler, where we were going to put it. I looked at going from Grayson and Highlands, um, over to the new river trail and finishing in Galax. Virginia mm -hmm. um, and ended up not doing that because a lot of the horse, a lot of the trails we would have used have been horse trails, whatever. That's another story for another time. Um, but the New River Trail, uh, I've ridden a bike on it, which I very thoroughly enjoyed riding a bike down that. But it's it's definitely definitely more mind torture in a way of like kind of like you're running crushed gravel. You know, it is nice, but it's like kind of the same thing for a lot of it. And you got to just kind of zone into that pace. And you were, you had told me you were going to go out there and just send it hard and see what happens. So, so dude, what happened? I, I believe, I believe I said podium or bust. 
And oh, uh, that's right. Uh, okay. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it was it was great. Like I uh, I, I love the mountains. Um, I love mountain races. Uh, I love vert. Um, I love epic vistas and stuff. Um, but every once in a while, I like to just go out and just see what I can do, like like the treadmill run I was talking about. Um, and so I really didn't have anything on the calendar. I'd been kind of slacking off getting back into my training plan. Um, and I just knew I needed something to just kind of just check and see physically where I was at. So I signed up for the new river. Um, uh, you know, I just was like looking for an open race uh, on ultra sign up. I'm like, what's, what's even available. That's I, I tend to just sign up for races last minute and, um, it was available. And, uh, I was like, Oh, cool. Like it's on a rails to trail. This is perfect. Um, you know, I'd love to go do some vert, but that way I'll really be able to see where my fitness is without having to add in the extra element of, of, of vert or elevation or anything like that. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's basically, it's, uh, 15 miles out, 15 miles back on crushed gravel. You're following the new river and then, oh man, I'm horrible with this. I think it's chestnut Creek. Um, but you're basically following a river or a Creek the whole time. It's, it's beautiful. You go through this tunnel, you go across a couple of big bridges. Um, it's, it's still, I mean, you're in nature, you're, you're getting cool views, but you're not like, it's not that like epic mountain race that you're looking for. But, uh, um, I absolutely love it. I'd recommend it to anybody that's, uh, you know, a first, first 50 K or if you wanted to go out and, uh, just test yourself. But, uh, um, so originally I had signed up for this race just to see where I was in my fitness. Um, and I did this workout last week and I like found my, my tempo where I felt like I'm like, I can run, I can run at 740 all day. I, I literally last weekend, I felt like I could do that. And so a couple of days before the race, I was just going into it just to have fun. And I'm like, screw this. I'm going to see where I'm at. And, uh, um, uh, you know, roughly on a 50 K, um, seven, I think it's 744 pace is sub four hours. So I'm like, okay, if I can average 740, then that's my sub four, um, which I came close to a year and a half ago. I got 404 and it really ticked me off. Um, I crossed that's the finish so line and they were like, you won. And I'm like, I threw my water bottle down and got all cranky and they're like, you won. I'm like, no, but I wanted those four minutes. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, I, I don't know. Like I just, I felt good. Um, my allergies were really bothering me, uh, the past week. And, uh, and so I had that kind of to deal with, but, uh, but other than that, I felt great. Um, my legs felt strong. Um, my calves like didn't feel tight or anything like that. So I'm like, screw it. Let's go for it. Let's literally let's, let's podium or bust. My goal was three fifty nine fifty nine, or I'm going to die trying. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, I like started the race. I put my, uh, my drum machine on 90 beats per minute. Start the race starts off. And like, I apparently take off out of the gate as some people say. Um, but it wasn't to me, it wasn't going crazy. I'm like, I just immediately got into my 740 pace. Um, which because my watch sucks now that I realized I was closer to probably 730, 725. Um, oh, but, uh, shit. So you're going a yeah, that that's another thing. Like, I like this, this watch. I need to, if Garmin. I'm doing that kind of, yeah. Rich, rich people <laughs> send Scott. A new updated yeah, please. Watch, please. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe if uh, I'll, I'll post the GPS, it literally did one of those like GPS things where like it's following the course and then like, it's a straight line back. Like <laughs> it's like, God, like I'm running on like a oh. sidewalk. How can you not follow me? But, uh, but anyway, like, um, out of the gate, I go into 740 pace, which is a little bit faster, but like, I look behind me and like people are like way back behind, I'm like, all right, whatever. Um, and, uh, but I just, I felt so good. It just felt like that, like the RPE rate of precision effort was just like, it was nothing. I was like, I'm going to do this for 30 miles. Like this is happening today. Um, and I got to the two mile mark, luckily because it's, uh, it's also shoot. What's the acronym? Um, US ATF the, mm -hmm. the yeah. Um, it's, it's yeah, yeah. Track and field. yep so it was certified for it was a certified distance they had the the marathon split um so if you were trying to qualify for boston it was a boston qualifier i could care mid, less mid about 50K, that 50k of course yeah um uh but uh that's awesome but so every mile was marked so 
even though my my watch was off, I knew like I like I looked down at two miles and I was exactly it was like fourteen fifty five. So I'm like, okay, I'm running seven thirty ish pace for two miles. So I'm like, slow down just a little bit, and then like I dialed that in and just kind of dialing it in off of the mile markers. Um, and I got to about the first aid station, which is five miles in, and I hear footsteps behind me, and I'm like, okay, I'm either slowing down or this guy's speeding up, but I'm like, don't race this guy. I'm I wasn't in. I know I said podium robust, but I wasn't in to win the race. I was in to get sub four hours. I had no idea what the the, the field was. I didn't look on ultra sign up. Like maybe I'll make, maybe there's some guys that are going to finish at, you know, three fifty or something like, um, but so this guy's coming up behind me and then we start running next to each other for a little while. And I just wasn't in a talking mood. Like I was literally like, it was a beautiful, there's like, there's rapids, there's the, there's the river there, but I was just looking 10 feet in front of me, just zoning out. Like, um, so like, we're just running next to each other, not really chatting, but like, I should have asked him like, Hey man, how you doing? Like, what's your goal today? Like, but we didn't really talk. And like, so anyway, we, we basically, uh, yo-yoed from mile five to the turnaround point at 15. Yeah, miles. You guys are racing each other. Yeah. And I wasn't racing him, but now that I look back on it, I was, cause he would get ahead of me and I'd be like, okay, like after the turnaround, I'll catch up to him or whatever. But like, I shouldn't have been attached to this guy or like that position. Um, and, uh, but, but so we yo-yo back and forth, whatever. Um, we blaze through the first, the aid station. And this is like, like, I see this as a flaw, but I, I, I probably wouldn't change it. But at the mile five aid station, I was running with one flask. He didn't stop. I didn't stop either. I had barely drank it in my water. I'm like, all right, the next aid station's at mile 10. Like I, 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 I did a, a preloading on hydration, which is like, you know, 30 ounces of water, uh, three grams of sodium, like very high electrolyte preloading 90 minutes before the race. And that really works well for me. So I wasn't even thirsty at all. Um, I think I still needed some like salt tablets or something to keep up with my electrolytes. Um, but I ended up running through uh, the five mile aid station. There was a weird, not really aid station, but where the 25K people turn around. So at like seven and a half, 7.8, there was another aid station. Um, and that's where uh, Kevin Sylvie and uh, um, and Paul were uh, were at. They were the the crew there, um, or the aid mm -hmm. station captains there. And uh, um, but anyway, so I blew through both those two, and then um, got to the eleven or the ten point five, whatever um, aid station. That's where I put in more tailwind, got more water, um, and then just kept going. Um, but every like th that aid station was even just a quick. I was there for fifteen seconds, however long it took me to fill my water bottle, and I went. Um, and uh, we're just running together. We're going, and there's just like um, I, I I look at my my splits on my watch, which is hard to tell. But I noticed after that when I kind of slowed down a little bit closer to eight minute miles. Um, but I, at that point, I didn't notice feeling that bad. But uh, um, oh. uh, but yeah. So we get to the turnaround, which is 15 miles. Uh, so first and second, we we both get in at the same time. We fill up our water really quickly, and then. This guy just like, is just like, dude, he should have been whistling. And like, he just kind of, the third place dude just kind of like rounds the corner and like, just like, Hey Jim. And just like passes us and just starts going. And I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not racing him. Don't worry about it. Just keep it, keep it your pace. The, the pace that I picked today that just stay at that. Don't, don't race this guy. But he starts getting a, a little bit ahead of me and farther ahead, farther ahead. Um, and I don't know, somewhere around mile 17, it's just like, it was pretty instant where like I was getting dizzy, lightheaded. Uh, I chugged the rest of my water. Luckily I only had like a couple more miles and then like, it wasn't even that hot, but like, uh, my head was getting really hot and like, um, so I got to the mile 19 aid station, um, on the, on the out and back and, uh, or on the return and, uh, just soaked my head underneath the water cooler. And like, it felt amazing, but like, it just, it wasn't enough. And like, I knew something was wrong. My stomach, I never get queasy, but like my stomach was like kind of getting jacked up. Um, I saw at this point I'd really started to slow down and I knew I'm like, okay, well this is over. Like here comes the bust, you know? Um, but, uh, I saw, uh, uh Kevin Sylvie at the, 
mile 24 aid station and like they're just having a blast. He's super, super excited to see me and all the other runners. And like, they were making bacon. And I think someone said he was making French toast. And at this point I'm nauseous. And all I want is like bland you tailwind like in my that. water. I feel horrible. <laughs> and, uh, mm. and Paul is like, uh, he's filling up my water bottle. We're not really talking. He sees how I'm doing. He's like, man, you're doing great. You're doing great. Kind of just BSing me. But, uh, and then like Kevin w- walks over with like French toast and he's like, dude, you got to try this. And I'm like, no, dude. And then he like, he goes away and like comes back with like quesadillas or a plate of bacon. And he's like, dude, try this. And like, and so I just, I, you know, I feel bad, but I, I yell at him. I'm like, dude, get out of my face or whatever I said. <laughs> like, cause I, I felt like I was going to throw up. If I like, the, if I smelled real food at that point, I would have like hurled all over the station. Right. Oh, so I think I had some like pickle juice and like tailwind and just kept going. But anyway, like, basically like mile 18 through 24 was horrible. And then I don't know what happened, but like there was a, like a little Creek, not a waterfall, but a Creek flowing off the side of a rock. I guess that would be a waterfall. Um, but like I saw it and I stopped and just like stuck my head under it for like, a, you know, 30 seconds. And it felt amazing. And that kind of just like, it, it clicked it for me. And then like, I was like walking for a second and like, I'll, I'll, I'll say this to myself all the time. I'm like, why are you walking? Like, I know it's like 25 miles into a race. You're kind of blown up, but like your stomach hurts, but like, dude, why are you walking? And so right. I had that dialogue going on in my head and I, I just snapped myself out of it. And then I ran the last six miles in and then like, like I was still like way behind. I, I, I think, I don't even know what I finished. I probably finished seventh or eighth, but uh, I knew I wasn't going to catch anybody, but the last two miles, I was like, dude, like, why am I doing a nine minute mile? Like I have, I have the gas in the tank. I feel like crap, but like, why am I walking or not? Why am I walking? But why am I running this slow? And uh, so the last two miles, like, I, I don't know what they were like, cause I, it definitely wasn't a sustained tempo, but like I was running back at that seven thirty pace again. And like, um, but anyway, so like, you know, like it wasn't an a goal race. Um, I ended up finishing, 50 minutes past my, like what I wanted. I wanted wow. 359 and I did, I think 450. Um, it's still amazing though. But, but it took that, it took the like knowing, all right, I'm going to push myself and it's going to push me to that point where if it's not a perfect day, I'm going to fail. Um, and I was okay with that. And like, so it wasn't bothering me. Oh, I'm like, God. Oh man, like I didn't get my goal. Like you know, the only thing that made me mad was like, my dad was there waiting for me at the finish line. I told him like, I'm going to be there at noon. And he's like, I'll see you there, son. <laughs> and like, So it's like, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, like it, it was a, it was a cool race. I learned a lot from it. Um, I don't know what I learned nutrition wise. Um, I don't think I could have done anything differently except for like taking in more electrolytes consistently. I, I've noticed that, that I just need more sodium. I need more electrolytes more often. And I think just not having that water earlier on was, was probably a, a detriment to the race. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was a great race. Um, Melissa, the, the RD, she was great. All the volunteers were out there. It was great. There, there's, I don't know if you've ever been to, uh, uh, it's called freeze, uh, yeah. but it, it's, it's spelled fries. I learned that, yeah. um, but it's, it's not fries. It's not a side of fries. It's freeze. Um, but, uh, uh, anywhere in freeze or like Galax, like there is just no cell service. Like they don't even no. try like, um, no. and so they had uh, much like GDR, they had the, uh, the ham radio guys out there, um, in communication. So it was cool to see that they had, a, a you know, um, the, the mayor, uh, was there like it was like a cool like it's such a cool um outdoors community um and it was cool that's to see awesome. all the people there yeah that's super cool well obviously you didn't have the result you wanted but i don't know i just think it's really awesome and that you just freaking went for it you know it's like i watch so many people just in life in general just play it safe and it's like oh god and i always I always watch a lot of people get really nervous, like before races, like, Oh my God. I mean, I, I do too. Um, but for different reasons, um, I feel, and it's funny where dude, I was out there taking photos of the river, like me and Jesse, the race photographer, there was a dude, it was the, uh, like 
just the sun had just risen there was like low fog coming off of the river and there's like a family of like seven deer off in the distance swimming across so, the river and I, I, like i get my camera out and i'm like taking photos of it and like i should be like stretching or something maybe that's where i went wrong too <laughs> <laughs> warm up and stretch kids there you go you heard it first here um no but i, I think it's awesome because i just think a lot of people get nervous like oh my god like what happens if i like I, I don't, know, don't finish or I feel bad. And it's like, that's just part of it. Like, you know, you can't do great things if you're afraid that in attempting those things or putting yourself in that gray area where you may or may not finish, you may or may not feel good or all the above. Um, like you're never going to accomplish anything awesome, you know, period. You just got to put yourself out there. So I, I applaud you for that. Sounds fun. Um, not my cup of tea for running, but I'm, always yeah. more than willing to help cheer people on and, and watch from afar. <laughs> yeah. It, it was funny. Uh, because like I said, I, I went out kind of, kind of hot at the beginning of the race and like, as people were starting to pass me in that mile 18 to mile 25, you know, I went from first to eighth eventually. Um, and you know, a couple of people would pass me and like, like, they'd be like, Oh, you're the guy that went out really fast at the beginning. Huh? And like, <laughs> that and, it's, and, and it's funny though, because like, People will say that you say it all the time too. It's like, don't go out too fast. Like, you know, know your limit. But like, if I would have won the race, it was like, Hey, good job. Like you started no, out strong and you finished strong. And so there's a big difference between like knowing your limitations and saying, I am not a seven minute uh, or seven thirty yeah. runner, but I'm going to start the race that way. And I'm going to gain these miles and then I'll slow down. Oh, so what I want to get back to is the guy that I was running with, um, from basically, five mile yeah, to 15 the, the mile. one two one yeah. two guy the so so he finishes and i was chatting with him after i'm like hey how'd you do and he's like he he came in like a couple of minutes before me he's like i think like 440 or 440 something um and he was like yeah but you know like that was my goal my goal was to do 450 and i was like what i'm like dude we were running like a 730 mile what were you doing right. that early in the race he's like oh i was just like I was going out strong and then I knew I'd slow down later. And so I should have a talked in the race and like, been like, Hey man, how's it going? My name's Scott. What's your name? Oh, like, you know, cause we were at a conversational pace. It wasn't like I was gassed. We just were both not talking, but you know, it's always nice to talk to people and say good job. And when people pass you in a race or whatever. Um, but, uh, but I should have asked him like, Hey man, like, are you going for sub four hours? Cause that's what we're paced at right now. And he would have been like, no, I'm going to slow down later. And then I would have been like, cool. And like backed way off. Cause that's what number three, the guy that ended up winning. That's, that's what he was doing. He just, he had his pace and he stuck to it. Probably had a better watch than I did and he could actually pace himself. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so like, you know, I, like it, it blew my mind that that dude was like, was like, yeah, my goal was 450. I'm like, you know, like, why are you going that fast? But anyway, like, you know, so people were like, yeah, you're the guy that like went out really fast at the beginning, huh? And it's like, you know, it didn't bother me because it's like, yeah, like I wasn't like overexerting myself. Like it wasn't like out of the limits of what I could run. I just had a bad day. Um, well, I, also have not, I also have not been training that much either. Like I haven't been putting in like, a, like this is the start of my training block. My training block is for Leadville 50 in July. So um so it's like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just now getting into this and like, I'm, I'm worried more about running at 10,000 feet and putting in sustained vert, not necessarily running at 730 pace, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's still freaking awesome, dude. And, and, and I think you hit the nail on the head. It's like, you know, when we say that, it's like, what are you doing? Slow down. And it's like, like you said, it's like, no. And this is why training and hill repeats or, or tempo runs or, whatever, know your pace, whether you're on the flat or up in the mountains, like stuff I was doing. Um, and just know it's like, is this something that's runnable? And it's like, you know, or is this a pace that I should be running at? And the answer is everyone, I shouldn't say everyone, 90 plus percent of people are going to get slower during a race, period. Your goal yep. as a runner should be a consistent effort with emphasis on eating, hydrating, and pacing so that last 20 percent you can try to go a little bit harder and the funny thing is your perceived effort will be a lot harder and your heart rate will be a lot higher but your pace or your effort pace will be hopefully the same um yeah 
you know, so I, yeah, that's, that's a great, great call on that. Yeah. And that's where that, like, the, I think the mindset comes in too. Cause like, you know, I, I'm super into mindset. I love meditation. I love like, that's why I love this race is cause it was literally just like stare 10 feet in front of me and just zone out, which I did. I have, um, it's not necessarily a mantra, but it's a form of meditation that I use and I've been integrating it into running where like, it's, I am not the body. I am not the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not the mind. And I'm not saying it over and over, but like, like it, those are the words that are like going through my mind when I'm running. And I've, you know, got this like, like kind of like tribal Indian drum machine going in the background. And it just like, it puts me into this, like as close to that runner's that runner's high or that, that flow state as I, as you can get. Um, but I noticed, I was like, I got into my head with this guy that was, that I was racing. And then when we hit the turnaround and, you know, number three passes me and, and I'm just like, man, what the heck? Like, and, and it got to me for a second and it's like, what the heck, what's going on? And I started noticing my mindset splitting and then I would start, my mind would start wandering and then my pace got off of the metronome. And like, and then I just started like slowing down. And so like, it, like, I even wonder if like, you know, me crumbling and blowing up is like, because I lost, I lost that mental fortitude that like, that I really needed for this, this type of, uh, this type of effort. Maybe you never know. Yeah. I mean, it's so easy to have a plan and then, you know, like somebody else, you know, can, take you out of that or things change, right? Like that's obviously, you know, the reality of these races and, and what's special about them, you know, and it's like, you gotta be centered, be focused. You know, I've had that before, um, definitely at races where, you know, all of a sudden it's like, wait, this is like an X factor, a wild card that I didn't prep for, you know? So yeah, whatever. Good on you, dude. Way to crush it. Yeah, man. It was fun. I had a great time. And uh, I'm excited, so I'm looking forward to last thing we'll talk about is um, I'm excited. I'm headed up to central Pennsylvania for what I tell everyone is my favorite trail race <laughs> anywhere in the world. It is super awesome. It is Heiner Trail Challenge 25K. They also have a 50K. Um, PA Trail Dogs puts it on. My buddy Craig Fleming and all his amazing volunteers um, that help him out. It's this cool little tight niche running community up in central PA. Um, how about this? 1,200 people, they register for the 25K. 1,200. <laughs> um, one year I was second place. It was like I was on like cloud nine for like two, three years after that. Um, they also have a 50K, um, which is a lot of the same course. Um, it's not the same loop twice. Um, and it's got 550 people in it. So it's like, basically it's like 1700 people plus or minus are registered over the whole weekend. Um, it's just a really special thing. It's got some flat, it's got like maybe a mile road total. Um, it's got douche grade climbs. It's got technical, it's got straight up, straight down, douche grade down. It's got every anything and everything. It's, it's just the perfect route, perfect race. So I'm excited about that. And, um, you get to see, a good buddy of mine, Matt Lipsy. Um, he has won this multiple times. He'll be racing against Ben Robinson, um, who I believe runs for Hoka. Uh, they're mm -hmm. also buddies up there. Uh, I'm not sure who's quicker. Um, but yeah. And then there's always, you know, 50, hundred people deep of fast folks. And so I'm just excited to see how my foot and uh, training handle up against this awesome course. Well, I mean, you've definitely been, uh, you've been doing the work or as, uh, as, as they say, the hay is in the barn or whatever they say. But, uh, I mean, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, man, like it, you, you've been putting in some serious effort the past couple of months. So it's like, uh, yeah, I hope you do well on this. And, uh, and, uh, I wish I could be up there. It sounds like an awesome race course. It's super cool. Well, yeah, man. Well, what a great, uh, week's podcast. Um, obviously got Heiner this week. The following weekend, I uh, got Brasstown Bald 5K uh, up in North Georgia, which I will be running and directing. Uh, then we got Grayson Highlands after that. That's sold out. Um, and then Quest for the Crest, still some spots in the 10K. And if you are listening to this, watching this, and you're looking for some fall races to run, we've got several races that have opened up right now. We have just today, 
Um, if you're anywhere near uh, North Florida, so it's a three and a half hour drive south of Atlanta, directly south on 75. It is the wild Florida 50K, 12 mile and six miler. 50K is point to point. All proceeds from this benefit the go directly to the Florida Trail Association. Um, it is the one charity, like just all out charity race that I have. I love it. I love giving back. We clear the trails down there for this race and give them a bunch of money last year. I think we raised it's like something like fourteen, fifteen thousand uh, dollars, and I became crazy. the single largest individual donate donor to the Florida Tra Trail Association, uh, only being beat by REI, of course. So yeah. um, that made me really but yeah, happy. That's also, but that's not you. That's that's Runbum is donating it, but that's the runners. Correct. That's every yes. race entry. Like yes. you guys don't understand. Hey, this race, like I actually ran it last year, and it yep. is such a beautiful course as somebody that grew up and born and raised in Florida. Like I've been running Florida trails my, you know, my whole life. Like it is such a beautiful area of the state. Like you have to go and do this race and like the proceeds go to basically keeping the Florida trail up and running. Um, so like, I mean, I, I definitely sign up for this one, wherever you are in the Southeast, like it's, you know, it's, it's a destination race, go and do it. Yeah. A hundred percent. And uh, it's 95 bucks to do a point to point 50 K like, what, yeah. do, what are you waiting on? You know? Um, and then we also have Scott summit went on sale recently. Uh, I think we have like less than 20 spots that happened in like a week. Georgia death race sold out in like a sold matter out. of days sold out. There's a wait list. You can join that. You're not charged to join that. Maybe we open up more spots still waiting on the, the five-year permit um, for that, but maybe not. So um, that's insane. Over a year out, we sold the race out, but sky to summit, epic, epic, race uh and we moved the race to the end of october um if you ran uh seven sisters if you like any kind of mountain running uh if you've never done a mountain run this is a great first time mountain race this is a great you know 100th ultra it's beautiful i design all these courses myself scott is some 50k wild florida 50k that's just where it's at like just straight up you know um yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, uh, like moving sky to summit to that last weekend in October, like the fall colors are going to be popping yes. for that race. It's going to yes. be so beautiful. Like, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. Absolutely. And it's like, I guess technically it's Halloween weekend. It's not on Halloween or anything, but we'll have to kind of do some themed aid stations maybe for that this year. Uh, I'm sure the volunteers will be, uh, they're already planning that now. So. Yeah, maybe we can talk you into like dyeing the mustache or something. <laughs> I will say I know we're wrapping this up, but uh I I I got the compliment of uh uh hey sir, you <laughs> I got I was I was in uh Galax Food City grocery store and got stopped and uh and sir, you look exactly like Freddie Mercury. <laughs> I was just like, Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> and so now I'm like, Well, probably time to lose the stash. But <laughs> love Freddie Mercury, but uh yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's not my MO. <laughs> yeah, that's I don't know if that's a compliment or not. Did you start singing? But <laughs> Dale I should have. <laughs> All right, well thanks again everybody for listening. Scott, thanks for being awesome. Thanks for being on. Thanks for editing and doing this podcast without you we cannot have this so much love and uh big shout out to the the easter wiener in the background over here and if you're not and watching those, on youtube you have no idea what i'm talking about. <laughs> for those just listening he's talking about his dog <laughs> That's right.